The film opens with a guy called Thomas P. Johnson chasing his buddy and business partner, Jeff Newman, along a two-lane rural road. Tom is pleading with Jeff to stop speeding, but Jeff refuses. Suddenly, a truck came in front of Tom's car, forcing him to veer off the road. Hence, Tom's car gets thrown into the air, eventually colliding into a tree. The film then shifts to a female golden retriever with three puppies. This has a colorful dog who lives in a hidden city area. One day, the golden retriever and her puppies are picked up by the city's authorities and taken to a pound. Finally, all of the puppies except for the mutt puppy are adopted, and the animal shelter makes the decision to euthanize the puppy. However, the puppy bites the city employee and manages to escape. The puppy dashes to his mother, but he is forced to run as the shelter personnel begin after him. Oddly, the dog frequently sees a boy and a lady in his strange dreams. In the city, an elderly homeless woman named Bella notices the dog and takes him in for whatever reason. Bella's ring also makes the dog think about Jeff Newman proposing to Carol Johnson. The puppy grows bigger thanks to Bella's care. Bella performs the shell game with the puppy to entertain people and earn money. One day, a bystander comments on the puppy's ability to beat Bella's game. A fluke, and Bella names the dog Fluke. After a few months, Bella becomes ill. She eventually dies in her sleep, leaving Fluke back on his own. Fluke, though, is soon discovered by Rumbo, a clever street dog. Rumbo makes him a buddy and shows him how to pee like a dog. Rumbo also takes him to see Bert, a restaurant owner. Rumbo then takes him to his residence, a junkyard operated and owned by a man by the name of Boss. Fluke keeps having nightmares about Tom and his family there. Fluke also discovers a magazine that features Jeff on the front cover for developing a revolutionary brake system. It suddenly dawns on Fluke that he was previously Thomas P. Johnson, who died in a car accident. Fluke is certain that Jeff plotted to kill him in a previous life in order to take over their company. Fluke tells Rumbo about the discovery, but he dismisses it as foolishness and tells him to avoid such dreams and thoughts. One day, Rumbo catches a man named Sylvester stealing from Bert and barks at the thief to alert Bert. Bert, on the other hand, shuts down the dog for disrupting the peace at the restaurant. On his way out, Sylvester purposefully steps on Rumbo's tail to punish him for trying to rat him out. Rumbo, though, strikes back by biting Sylvester's leg. Later, Sylvester threatens to report the dog to animal control, so the employer is compelled to give him money to remain quiet. The owner then disciplined the dogs for causing disturbance. Even during his punishment, Fluke continues to dream about his family. One day, Fluke dials Carol's number from memory when the boss is busy with his job. Carol answers the call, and she starts to speak eventually revealing that these are memories rather than just dreams. After becoming sure of his previous life, Fluke again talks to Rumbo about it, and this time Rumbo admits having knowledge about it. As Fluke confesses his desire to reconnect with his family, Rumbo declares that he would not assist him in finding his family. When Rumbo walks away, Sylvester appears with a bunch of guys who kidnap Fluke and take him to a cosmetics firm for experimentation. During the experiments, Rumbo enters the facility and knocks down the main scientist, leading Sylvester to run in fear. Rumbo then lets all the animals out of their cages. Rumbo then leads Fluke outside the building. When they run, Sylvester returns with the guards and shoots Rumbo. They manage to flee to the woods, but Rumbo is fatally shot. A dying Rumbo tells his past to Fluke. It is revealed that the black and white photograph of a man in a sailor outfit on Bert's wall was Rumbo's former self. Bert was also his brother, and he admits that he misses the smell of the ocean. It implied that in his former life, Rumbo killed in the line of duty. Fluke looks for Rumbo's surviving wife, Carol and Kid Brian after Rumbo dies. He travels for kilometers to go to his son's school. After hours of waiting, Brian arrives and is taken up by his mother, Carol. Fluke rushes to Carol's car, terrifying her to death. Carol makes efforts to get rid of the dog, but he refuses to go away. Carol is unimpressed, so Fluke attempts to charm Brian but Carol drives him away. Fluke, on the other hand, won't give up and follows them inside. Fluke eventually charms Carol with his usual doggy skills, and she lets him into the home for one meal. But, Brian persuades Carol to let him keep Fluke until they find his owner. They give Fluke a clean bath and make him feel at home. Fluke attempts to give Brian signs that he is his father, but the youngster merely perceives it as a miracle of sorts for Christmas. Fluke also tries to drop hints to Carol, but without success. At night, Carol gives Fluke a small closet to sleep in, but Fluke sneaks out after everyone goes to sleep and wanders around the house. After tucking his son to bed, Fluke resigns for the night next to Carol. Fluke spends the following few days getting to know his family better. He also spends his day playing with Brian, something that Tom never had time for when he was a human, and he understands the value of every minute. 
He hopes that, sooner or later, he will be able to tell them who he truly is. One day, Jeff shows up at their home, and Fluke attacks him, believing that his old business partner was responsible for his human death. Shocked, Carol assists Jeff in grabbing Fluke and ejecting him from the house. Brian was displeased. Jeff also contacts Animal Control to remove the aggressive dog from the house, which causes Fluke to flee. Later that evening, in the pouring rain, Brian slips Fluke into his bed. After Brian falls asleep, Fluke heads out of the room and eavesdrops on Jeff and Carol's conversation. Carol mentions Tom and apologizes for not knowing what Tom was going through at work. Jeff consoles her, and one thing leads to another, and they make out, greatly to the dismay of Fluke. The next day, Fluke slips out of the home and goes to Tom and John's workplace. Meanwhile, Brian awakens with a fever and attempts to walk outside to search for Fluke. Carol sends him back to bed before heading into the building. Fluke purposefully urinates on Jeff's car. Then Fluke breaks into Tom's office, and Tom remembers staying up late working and skipping his wife's dinner date. Suddenly, the phone begins to ring and as Jeff walks into the room, Fluke sneaks out. Carol informs Jeff over the phone that Brian has left the home to search for Fluke. Jeff urges her to calm down and promises to find Brian. Jeff quickly exits the building and drives to Carol's house. Fluke, who is hidden in his car's rear seat, attacks him as he travels there. Jeff immediately loses control of the vehicle, which then collides with a brick structure. Fluke is hurt in the collision as well, and all of a sudden, he remembers everything. He remembers arguing with Jeff on the day he passed away. Jeff had created a brake system prototype that was two times more effective than any other braking system in the world. Tom wasn't happy with it, though, since it cost twice as much, and that meant less money for the business. As Jeff reminded Tom that they started the company to accomplish something good, Tom became furious because he was overwhelmed by the responsibilities of caring for his family. And disagreement ensued as a result, and when Tom became aggressive, Jeff walked out of the office. Tom, however, began pursuing Jeff in his car and yelling for a conversation. Tom was driving wildly on the wrong side of the road while repeatedly telling Jeff to stop, until he lost control to dodge a truck approaching at him and killed. Jeff hurried to Tom's side and attempted to save him, but he was failed. It eventually dawns on Fluke that Tom was merely a distant workaholic who distanced himself from his family and friends. Tom was at blame for everything, and Jeff had always been his genuine buddy. Fluke, overcome with regret, rushes over to assist Jeff, just as he did when Tom was killed in a car crash. Jeff seems to know who Fluke really is. Jeff doesn't mean any harm, though, and orders Fluke to find Brian so that he doesn't get hypothermic from the snowfall. Fluke, feeling bad about what he did, calls out to a passing car to assist Jeff before taking off on a whim. Fluke visits the graveyard to discover Brian there by lucky chance. Tom had been buried there. It turns out that a negligent groundskeeper had locked Brian inside. Carol discovers at home, through studying at Brian's artwork that he is at the graveyard. Fluke huddles with Brian to keep him warm until Carol arrives to the graveyard and uses her car to smash open the gates. Carol gets Brian into the car, and he tells her about a dream in which Fluke talked to him. Apparently, Fluke told him not to cry before revealing that he had to go away. Carol then attempts to get Fluke to join them home. Fluke, on the other hand, digs away at the snow in front of Tom's tombstone to reveal his true identity to Carol by revealing the word forever at the bottom. As a human, he frequently said this to her. Carol is rendered speechless and allows Fluke to depart without protest. Fluke leaves with a heavy heart and gives Jeff responsibility for the happiness of his family. Tom says he had to go because he had to come to terms with the fact that he can no longer be the family man he ought to be and that he should just be grateful for the life he has right now, which, at the time, he hadn't done. Far distance and some time later, while lounging alone on a tree on a farm, Fluke meets Rumbo again, this time in the form of a squirrel. Fluke is happy and the two talk for the whole day. 